one simple way to make much of your exercise selection very simple. Ask yourself, how many reps do you need? How many reps would you need to do in order for that activity or exercise to provide a sufficient stimulus to drive the desired adaptation? Maybe the more reps you need of that exercise or activity may mean it's less effective compared to many other alternative options. A stimulus should create fatigue. That's what drives adaptation. Whatever the exercise is that you're doing, if you can do that thing forever without creating any fatigue, the stimulus that it's providing is very likely low and not potent. This is partially why I don't prescribe various medicine ball throws or banded tantrums. And when I do prescribe loaded jumps, it's not your typical four sets of five at 30% because you can do way more work than that prescription before any fatigue sets in. For some of those exercises, you would need to do like 100 reps or more for it to work. And you probably don't have that much time in your training to do 100 reps of something. High effort or max effort sprints, you don't need many reps. The stimulus is strong. High effort approach jumps or bounding variations, you don't need many reps. The stimulus is strong. High effort weightlifting or main barbell strength training, you don't need many reps. The stimulus is strong. Doing those things with high intent, fatigue sets in relatively early. So I just think that's an easy way of prioritizing certain exercises over others in your training, especially if you're limited in time or have other activities in your schedule like playing sports. So just ask yourself, how many reps of this thing would I need to do in order to get a sufficient stimulus? If the answer is not that many, then it's probably a good thing to do. You can probably accomplish a lot very efficiently with it. That's all I got for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.